Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. <laughs> It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, many of the nation's schools commence a new semester on Monday. And Madison High School, where Our Miss Brooks teaches English, is one of them. Although the others usually dispense with classes on the last day or two of the old term, Madison did not. No, indeed. Our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, saw to that. In fact, he was quite chagrined when a cloudburst last Friday kept almost all of the student body at home. Even members of the faculty didn't get down, except a handful of teachers, me. <laughs> Since Mr. Conklin didn't show up until quite late, I took it upon myself to dismiss the few soaked pupils who were floating around the halls. Saturday morning at breakfast, I discussed the situation with my landlady. And what did Mr. Conklin say when you told him you had canceled school for the day, Connie? He didn't say a word, Miss D Mrs. Davis, until he came down off the ceiling. <laughs> Then he accused me of usurping his function as a principal and throwing a monkey wrench into his plan for getting the jump on the other schools. What sort of plan did he have, Connie? Well, he felt that schedules should be revised and classes assigned before the first day of the new semester. Hence, we have all been invited to appear at school today. But this is Saturday, Connie. Mr. Conklin hasn't the authority to make anybody come to school. He doesn't make anybody come. He's put it on a voluntary basis. For both the student body and the faculty, it's strictly optional. Really? Of course. Come or die. <laughs> I can't understand some of you teachers, Connie. Why do you let Mr. Conklin drive you this way? What are you all? A bunch of... of geese? I don't know about the others, but don't be surprised if some morning you find a feather by my empty bed. <laughs> You see, Mrs. Davis, I've been in so much trouble with Mr. Conklin during the past term, I don't dare start the new one off on the wrong foot. Oh, that's probably Walter Denton. He's giving me a lift down to school. Come in, Walter. It certainly is nice of Walter to call for you this morning. Yes, it is, considering that I made it quite clear to him that his driving me was strictly optional. Really? Of course. Be here or flunk. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Davis. And to you, most revered and admired of all local educators, I bow deeply from the waist. <laughs> Thank you, and get your head out of the milk pitcher. <laughs> Sit down, Walter. I'll pour you a glass. Ah, oh, thanks. Would you like something else, Walter? Uh, what have you got? Oh, uh, cereal, eggs, sausage, bacon, toast. And that'll be fine. <laughs> Obviously, you haven't had anything to eat since breakfast. Oh, that's right, Miss Brooks. Over an hour ago. <laughs> a growing boy should eat a lot, especially if you want to grow up and be big and strong like Hopalong Cassidy. If Hopalong Cassidy ate like Walter, he'd never make it to the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I'll go fix a nice plate for you, Walter. <clears throat> oh, uh, how do you take your eggs? Four in the mouth and six intravenously. <laughs> Gosh, Miss Brooks, you make me sound like a pig. Uh, just scramble a few with some bacon and sausages, Mrs. Davis, please. All right, dear. Well, this is great. What better way to start <clears throat> off the day than a resounding second breakfast with my favorite school teacher? For a kid who's going to school on Saturday, you sound pretty chipper, Walter. Ah, but that's where you're wrong, Miss Brooks. I'm not going to school today. None of the students are. We held a mass meeting last night and decided that the only course to pursue was open rebellion. What? The issues are clear, Miss Brooks. If we let old Marblehead haul us into school today... Now, just a minute, Walter. I won't have you referring to the principal of our school in such a disrespectful manner. I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, but... Well, don't you see, if we submit to his demand that we attend school on Saturday, what's to prevent him from dragging us down on Sunday? Or even holidays? Oh, I can just picture it. Christmas weekend comes. Everybody's off having fun. But our principal decrees that we must spend every day of our vacation in school. Old Marblehead wouldn't dare. <laughs> Don't you worry, Miss Brooks. Even though we all recognize this for the tyranny that it is, it is a short-lived tyranny. 
Our spokesman elected unanimously at last night's meeting will see to that. Spokesman? Whom did you elect? Let me be the first to congratulate you. <laughs> well, what more logical choice may I add to slay the tyrants? Now, wait a second, Walter. It just happens that I didn't renew my card in the Tyrant Slayers Union. <laughs> I'm in enough hot water now for canceling school yesterday. Well, that was different. It was an emergency. A plus which nobody was there anyway. But don't worry about it now. We can plan our campaign on the way down to school. I thought you said you weren't going. Of course I'm going. I'm in charge of the picket line. <laughs> As one of the organizers of this rebellion, it's up to me to see that the protest meeting this morning goes off without a flaw. Are you sure you've got the eyebrows for this kind of work? <laughs> oh, we've got a great program lined up, Miss Brooks. Some of the kids are bringing a dummy down so we can hang Mr. Conklin in effigy. But, Walter, that's a pretty violent way of protesting. Oh, it'll all be in fun. Sort of. <laughs> well, even Mr. Conklin's daughter Harriet's on our side. So, here's the plan, Miss Brooks. First, we're gonna have one last talk with Mr. Conklin, then we're gonna go out and hang the dummy. Well, what do you think of the scheme? It's a dandy, Walter. Of course, it would be more effective if you had one last talk with the dummy and then went out, oh, there I go with that wishful thinking. <laughs> For a group who decided not to come to school today, there's quite a crowd on the campus. I wonder where Stretch Snodgrass is. Uh, he's supposed to carry the dummy over to the flagpole. As Madison's star athlete, he deserves the honor, but let me offer a word of caution, Walter. Uh, what's that, Miss Brooks? Well, I don't want to cast any aspersions on Stretch's mentality, but if he's carrying the dummy, be very careful who you string up. <laughs> Hiya, Stretch. Oh, hi, Walter. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Stretch. Oh, I made up a slogan for one of the picket signs, Walter, but I'm afraid it might be a teeny-weeny bit disrespectful. Want to hear it? Sure. How does it go? It goes, Mr. Conklin is very unfair. I'm going to wash that guy right out of my hair. <laughs> well, I don't think a slogan like that's too disrespectful to you, Miss Brooks. Not if you want to finish your education in another part of the state. <laughs> well, the real fun will come later, Miss Brooks. We're going to hang Mr. Conklin in a figgy. What? In a figgy. Will he fit in a figgy? <laughs> no, he means in effigy, Miss Brooks. Oh, I kind of liked it the other way. <laughs> yeah, well, I better get the thing now. I'll see you later, Miss Brooks. Bye, Walter. Ah, so long, pal. Well, everything's rolling right along. Uh, let's see if Mr. Conklin got here yet. <coughs> Hello, Miss Brooks. Walter. Well, I just talked to Daddy, and he's livid. He blames you for the entire insurrection, Miss Brooks. Me? I tried to reason with him. I even told him that you weren't present when we named you our spokesman, although it was a foregone conclusion that you'd accept the honor with great enthusiasm. That's getting me off the hook. <laughs> Daddy says if you hadn't canceled school yesterday, this wouldn't have happened. You're in an awful spot. Gosh, I didn't mean to get you into such a jam, Miss Brooks. Well, I'm in it, and it's up to me to get out of it. Please don't think I'm a Benedict Arnold, but I'd better get up on the school steps and have a little talk with some of these strikers. Well, it probably won't do any good, but I can't blame you for trying. Well, Student! Uh, boys and girls, I'd like to talk to you for just a moment. Quiet, please! Thank you. Now, I'm sure you all have as much pride in your school as any members of the faculty have, or as its principal, Mr. Conklin, has. Oh, uh, please, please. I'm just trying to tell you that by working for a few hours today, we can be prepared to launch our new semester on Monday with a minimum of confusion, thus assuring us of a better start toward that degree of scholastic excellence which has always prevailed at Madison High. Remember, students, education is your sacred heritage, your guaranteed right under the Constitution, as well as the Bill of Rights, which ensures us all of the benefits and privileges which every American has come to feel. And so, Miss Brooks, I hold you personally responsible for the fact that these malcontents are not in their classrooms yet. But, Mr. Conklin, I really tried to... Uh, excuse me. This is Osgood Conklin's office. Mr. Conklin himself speaking. 
Hello, Hello Conklin. This is Mr. Stone at the Board of Education. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Stone. How's every little I have no thing? time for chit-chat. A rather disturbing rumor has reached me to the effect that you've summoned your student body to school today. My student body? You realize, of course, that such an action on your part without sanction from the board would constitute a breach of authority that could lead to your immediate dismissal? Uh, uh, yes, sir, yes, of course. Now, I can't for the life of me imagine where these ridiculous rumors begin. Why, I'm here all alone. Not another soul in the office. <laughs> Bless you. Shut up! <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sorry, sir. My uh, cat has a cold. <laughs> uh, but uh, about that rumor, the only reason I'm in the office is to get out some letters. Good, I... good. I thought you had better sense than to do anything that autocratic. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, Osgood, I'll be in your neighborhood in a little while. Perhaps I'll drop in to discuss some board matters with you. Fine, Mr. Stone. That'll be just grand. I'll look forward to seeing you. Very well. Goodbye, Osgood. Goodbye, Mr. Stone. Well, Miss Brooks, sometimes everything happens for the best. Because of you, no child has set foot in this building as yet. Is that right? I guess not, Mr. Conklin, but if you'll just wait I until I'll, I... I'll be frank with you, Miss Brooks. If they had come in, it could have meant my dismissal. I don't understand Mr. Stone's attitude, but, well, go out to your youthful charges and inform them that there is no school today. Oh, fine, Mr. Conklin. You did it, Miss Brooks. I didn't think you could do it, but you did it. What are you talking about, Denton? Oh, she was wonderful, Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks made a speech a few minutes ago that'll go down in Madison's history. Yes, sir, every student is in his or her classroom right now. <laughs> and believe me, Mr. Conklin, wild horses couldn't drag them out of this school today. <laughs> well, Miss Brew? <laughs> you heard the boy. Thanks to your speech, wild horses couldn't drag them out of school today. And now, young woman, may I ask what you propose to do? Step aside, Mr. Conklin. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, I told Walter Denton to corral the students and herd them into the cafeteria. While I was waiting for them to assemble, I corralled Mr. Boynton and herded him into a corner table. Over a cup of coffee, I told him of Mr. Conklin's dilemma. As usual, Mr. Boynton was extremely sympathetic. So you see, if these kids don't go home at once, Mr. Conklin can get in big trouble with the board. Well, that's his worry. Oh, he should have known better than to ask students to come to school on Saturday, let alone the faculty. I wish he would let alone the faculty. <laughs> but we're in it now, at least I am, up to our necks, at least my neck. Fine English teacher. <laughs> Well, I, I don't like to see you distressed about it. Now, look, when we do leave here, how about going someplace, just the two of us? What sort of place did you have in mind, Mr. Boynton? Well, I don't know. It's uh, a date. I, I thought maybe you'd enjoy the, the zoo again today. Now, I understand they've got a yak over there that's over 60 years old. Honestly? Yeah. 
Uh, that's pretty old for a yak, you know. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> then old yaks are so much more fun than young yaks, don't you think? <laughs> Don't you care? I know I don't. <laughs> well, I got most of the kids in, Miss Brooks. Oh, hi, Mr. Boynton. Oh, hello, Walter. I'll hold this chair for you, Miss Brooks. Go ahead, get up on it and make your speech. Thanks, Walter. Uh, students, attention, please. Well, I was afraid, well, huh? I've called you here for some very good news. You don't have to stay in school today. We don't have to Miss Brooks, after your speech of this morning, we want to stay. Don't you believe it? This, after all, is Saturday, a holiday. One to which you are not only entitled by law, but which is guaranteed to you by the Constitution. <laughs> by the Bill of Rights and every other document so carefully prepared to safeguard the interest of you, the future leaders of our race. Hello? Hello, Osgood. This is Mr. Stone. I'm afraid I won't be able to drop in on you today after all. My wife's been driving my car all week, and it's pretty well shot. Yes. <laughs> yes, I've seen her. <laughs> your, your, your car, that is. Your car. Uh, I'm uh, sorry you can't drop in, though, Mr. Stone, but when you do pay us a visit, you'll find as smooth a running educational operation as there is in this country. I'm sure of it, Osgood. Well, goodbye for now. Goodbye, sir, and thanks for calling. Uh, come in. It's me, Mr. Conklin. I told the students that they can go home any time they want to. What? Have they left yet? No, sir. Most of them are still in the cafeteria, but they're they're just... They're going to pay for this morning's protest meeting. Mr. Stone isn't coming down after all. So you can just tell those recalcitrant mischief makers that they're staying here today until 4 p.m. But, Mr. Conklin, I can't make another speech. It's an order, Miss Brooks. Miss, (laughs) Miss... by working for a few hours today, we can be assured of a better start toward that degree of scholastic excellence which has always prevailed at Madison High. Remember, students, education is your safe (laughs) guarantee. Your guaranteed right under the Constitution, as well as the Bill of Rights, which ensures us all the benefits and privileges which every American... Stretch, I don't like to cross Miss Brooks up, but we just got to get out of school today. But we're all on detention, Walter. We got to stay till 4 p.m. What makes me mad, we didn't even get to burn Mr. Conklin in a figgy. <laughs> yeah, I know it's stretching. Hey, wait a minute. You just gave me an idea. Suppose we had a fire drill. Then when we all ran out of school, we could just forget to stop running until we got home. Yeah, but the control for the fire alarm bell is in Mr. Conklin's office, and he ain't gonna ring it for no reason. Then let's give him a reason. You mean start a fire? No, no, not a real fire stretch. A fake one. We can get some dry ice in the cafeteria kitchen and drop it in a bucket of water. Oh, that makes the most beautiful smoke you ever saw. And then we just fan it under old Marblehead's door until it fills his office. Then he comes out of his door and hits us with the bucket. No, no, he doesn't. We remove the screws from his doorknob from the outside. And then when he tries to open the door, the knob comes away in his hand, and Conklin falls right on his conk. Boy, you should get a scholarship. So, Miss Brooks, you've informed the student body that they're all under detention until four? Yes, sir, I did. But suppose Mr. Stone does come over and discovers that you're keeping us all in school on a holiday. Ah, but he won't, Miss Brooks. He has no way to get here. His car broke down. Suppose he decided to walk over. Walk over? That's ridiculous. Well, hello, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Stone. (laughs) I decided to walk over. That's ridiculous. (laughs) Hello, Mr. Stone. How are you? Fine, thanks, Miss Brooks. I uh, would have been here sooner, Osgood, but I dozed off for a few minutes in the park. I stopped to rest on my favorite bench, the one under Paul Revere's statue. Uh, That is an extremely comfortable bench. Such nice, soft slats. (laughs) Uh, Tell me, Miss Brooks, uh, what brought you to old Madison today? Old Mr. Conklin. Uh, That is, Mr. Conklin asked me to type some letters for him. Uh, Yes, yes, that's it. She's typing some letters for me. 
But uh, I don't see any typewriter in here. Uh, well, it's in the next room. In the next room? I have very long arms. <laughs> Now that we've finished, Mr. Conklin, why don't you drive Mr. Stone home instead of remaining in this stuffy old, empty old school? A splendid idea. Come along, Mr. Uh, Stone. Not so fast, we'll... Osgood. There are several things... That, uh, what's that? Uh, there must be someone loitering in the hall. Impossible. There's no one in school today. But I'd swear I... I just saw that doorknob turning. Turning into what? <laughs> and, and what's that? Swirling in under the door. Oh, that's nothing but smoke. <laughs> Yes, that, that's all it is. Just smoke. Oh, of course, that's all it is. Smoke. Smoke! <laughs> Good heavens, the school's on fire. Let's get out of here. Follow me. Oh! <laughs> the door knocked him away in his hand. Oh, let me help you up, Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone? He fell on the back of his head, Mr. Conklin. He's unconscious. Quick, quick, Miss Brooks. Crawl through the window and run around and open the door from the outside. I'll try to revive Mr. Stone. <laughs> yes, sir. <coughs> Smoke's getting pretty thick in here. I can hardly see you, Miss Brooks. I can't see you at all, Mr. Conklin. <coughs> I never could. <laughs> Gosh, Walter, we've been fanning smoke under that door for five minutes now, and he ain't rung the fire alarm yet. Relax, Stretch. With the fog he's in, it'll take him a little while to notice the smoke. You don't think Mr. Conklin has become expiexicated, do you? <laughs> no, that would be too much to hope for. But if he is expiexicated, maybe we ought to open the door and haul him out of there. Please, let's not spoil a perfectly good axe-fixication. <laughs> Miss Brooks! We're cooked. Oh, it's not a real fire, Miss Brooks. It's just dry ice and water, see? Uh, we were trying to get Mr. Conklin to ring the fire alarm so we could escape from school in the confusion. Oh, there's a lot you can do on Saturday on the outside. Gosh, Miss Brooks, now that you caught us, what are you going to do? Hand me that newspaper. I'll fan the smoke for a while. <laughs> Gee, you're a swell sport, Miss Brooks. You think you'll ring the alarm pretty soon? Maybe he needs a little encouragement. Keep up your courage, Mr. Conklin. I'm fighting my way through the flames. <laughs> oh, you rise out old marble head. Go ahead, Miss Brooks. Scare him some more. I'm trying to reach you, Mr. Conklin, but the heat is terrific. Perhaps I could get you a nice, cool lemonade, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Right now, thanks. I've got to keep fanning this dry ice and... Uh, duh! <laughs> now, Miss Brooks, if you're quite finished fighting your way through the flames... You got here in the nick of time, Mr. Conklin. I just put the fire out. Yeah, me too. Well, I better be getting back to my classroom now. Yeah, me too. Stand where you are, you culprits. Why, Mr. Conklin, you should thank these boys for what they've done. Thank them? Certainly. When Walter and Stretch realized the trouble you'd get into with Mr. Stone, they took this means of detaining him until the students were cleared out. Sure. As long as Mr. Stone is locked in there, you're safe. Hand me that newspaper. I'll fan the smoke for a while. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Conklin. A, pour some more water on that dry ice, Snodgrass. You, Denton, see that all the classrooms are emptied and report back to me. Yes, sir. I'll clear them out nothing flat. <laughs> Mr. Stone will have to get up pretty early in the morning to outsmart old Marblehead. <laughs> uh, I don't think you're getting enough smoke under the door, Mr. Conklin. Oh, well, this newspaper's too flexible. Get me something firmer to fan the smoke with. Perhaps you'd like to use my hat, Mr. Conklin? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stone. Thank you. That should work much better than this... Thank you, Mr. Stone! <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I will discuss this matter with you privately in your office. But, Mr. Stone... Follow me, sir. Oh! Mr. Stone! <laughs> The door lamp came away in his hand again. Mr. Stone, say something. He's unconscious. Miss Brooks, what do I do now? In an emergency like this, there's only one thing to do. Run, do not walk to the nearest employment agency. Eve Arden is our Miss Brooks. Returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. 
Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after Mr. Stone knocked himself out for the second time, I did some pretty fast thinking and came up with a desperation tactic. Recalling his remark that he had dozed on a park bench, I enlisted the aid of Mr. Boynton, and we hauled the head of the board over to the statue of Paul Revere. Oh, he's still out cold, Miss Brooks. I'll try the smelling salts again. There. Put them away, Mr. Boynton. He's coming, too. Wake up, Mr. Stone. Wake up. Huh? What's that? Oh, Miss Brooks, about that fire. If you'll step into Mr. Conklin's office... I... Mr. Conklin's office? Where is it? Good heavens, the school is burned down. School? What school? Now, listen, Miss Brooks, when I first saw you today... Today? Why, I haven't seen you in two weeks, Mr. Stone. Since there was no school today, Mr. Boynton and I decided to stroll through the park. Uh, yes, sir, and when we saw you dozing, we thought we'd better awaken you before you rolled off that bench. Bench? Park? I... Oh, I do remember stopping to rest, but I... Oh, what a nightmare I've just had. <laughs> Maybe you'd better go home and get some real rest, Mr. Stone. Yeah, excellent suggestion. I'll go right home and I... Wait a minute. Uh, what's the matter? How did I get this doorknob in my hand? <laughs> doorknob? Oh, that. That must have fallen from Paul Revere's statue. <laughs> from Paul Revere's statue? Of course. With the British coming, he was in an awful rush. <laughs> Next week, turn into another R. Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Bill Johnstone, and Leonard Smith. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials using nothing but palm olive brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So, start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Today, more than ever before, America's security depends upon us as individuals. And if we really care what happens to us, our children, our country, we must at any cost defy vicious racial and religious biases from those around us. For unless we do, we will be a people divided, our claims of freedom and democracy only empty gestures. Let's work together as a team to keep the freedom we all enjoy. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.